the campaign manager for Joe Biden, the Democratic candidate, has said uh, that uh, Joe Biden expects uh, to win today. Uh, he expects that the Democratic candidate uh, will go past uh, those 270 votes. And we can go to Delaware now and listen to that news briefing. The next president of the United States. The vice president will fight for every vote to be counted. Some of the outstanding votes will be for the vice president. Some of them are going to be for Donald Trump. But the vice president believes they all should be counted. And when all of the votes are tallied, as they have been in every election since our country has been founded, we are confident that Vice President Joe Biden will be the next president of the United States. So I'd now like to hand this presentation over to Bob Bauer to talk about the legal elements that are uh, the focus of today and coming days around the race. Thank you, Jen. I'd like to walk you uh, through the background of the Republican attacks on the voting process, which culminated in the president's uh, extraordinary statements last night at 2 or 2.30 in the morning. He had apparently huddled uh, with his advisors and analysts, and he realized that what Jen said was true uh, and hustled out to say that he needed the vote count to stop because he knew where it was going to lead. Now, what he said yesterday was extraordinary, but I think entirely consistent with Republican attacks on the voting process. And I'd like to take you through a few points about where the Republicans have been, where they're going, and why they're going to fail. But let me begin with a few basic foundational points. Americans should have faith in the voting process. They should have a constitutional right to lawfully cast their ballots and to have those ballots counted. And that proposition couldn't be more central uh, to our democracy. Election administrators have worked extremely hard around the country to deliver, as we said just a couple of days ago, the right to vote to citizens who are entitled to exercise that right. And they are working hard, have worked hard yesterday and long into the night to process the counting of ballots as quickly as possible. And as everybody knows who's ever followed an election in the United States, it is far from abnormal and certainly not inconsistent with law and indeed required by the Constitution that the count continue until all the votes are counted. Nothing could be more fundamental than this basic proposition that President Trump attacked last night. Now, it is interesting to note that uh, the count could have started earlier and we could have had results earlier, but for the attempts of Republican legislatures in Michigan um, and in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin to refuse to permit an earlier ballot count. So they were looking to log jam that process and they did that with the precise effort to set up the claim that the president was making yesterday, that somehow uh, there was some large number of ballots that were suspiciously uncounted. That count could have proceeded more rapidly had Republican legislatures in a clear and cynical strategic move not acted to block it. But uh, that effort, for various reasons that I will outline for you, will fail. Let me also, uh, in making that point, just note just in recent days, before President Trump appeared yesterday to make his extraordinary statement, a, an example of some of what we've seen the Republicans try to do to undermine this election in various states. Take, for example, this last Monday, when a Republican clerk stepped into the courts to try to stop the counting of ballots, arguing that the Secretary of State had given inadequate guidance on ballot counting. That guidance, by the way, had been issued in February of this year, months ago. But in the 11th hour, the Republicans claimed there was some flaw in the ballot counting process. And as we knew from the moment we reviewed the papers, that effort completely failed. The court tossed it out. Then, also on Monday, a right-wing organization allied with President Trump tried to stop the count in Michigan, once again on the assertion, completely groundless, that there was something improper in the polling observation or the vote observation process. Each political party had numerous observers present. The law was fully complied with. The court knew that and tossed this lawsuit out as well. And in Nevada, and I'm about to turn to Pennsylvania, the Republicans tried to stop all counting in Clark County, making unsupported, completely meritlessly, transparently meritless claims of irregularity. And once again, a court stepped in and threw the claim out. Now I'm turning to Pennsylvania uh, just because there's been a lot of discussion of what the Republicans have been attempting to do there and threatening to do there. T 
time and again, they have tried to cast doubt on the election and to seek to disqualify ballots. But let me give you a few examples. Let's start with ballot drop boxes. The Republicans have attempted to claim in both federal and state court that drop boxes were prohibited and likely to give rise to fraud. These claims, once again, brought before a judge, failed completely. In-person absentee voting. Republicans brought lawsuits in two of the Pennsylvania's largest cities and tried to shut down absentee voting on a specious claim that they had not been afforded access, access provided by law to witness the voting. Again, brought before a court, the suits were rejected. And even this last Tuesday, or excuse me, on Tuesday, October 27th, uh, shortly before the election, the Republicans ran into court to attempt to disqualify ballots cast by voters who had had to stand in long lines. This was on the last day of in-person voting. And once again, a court dismissed these claims. So time and again, the Republicans enter into the judicial process and have, from the very beginning, to slow the count, to disqualify ballots, and to undermine the process. And the president's statement last night was the last in that venture. Let me just, if I could, quote Donald Trump precisely as he spoke last night. He said, as I'm sure many of you remember or read about this morning, quote, so we'll be going to the U.S. Supreme Court. We want all voting to stop. We don't want them to find any ballots at 4 o'clock in the morning and add them to the list. Well, let me tell you this. If you go to the Supreme Court today, drive around the building, you will not see Donald Trump and you will not see his lawyers. He's not going to the Supreme Court of the United States to get the voting to stop. And if at some point, filing once again, these specious claims rejected by court after court, if at some point he arrives before the Supreme Court with a novel proposition that ballots that were lawfully cast by eligible voters but not yet counted by the time Donald Trump wanted them counted, that somehow they don't count anymore, he will be in for one of the most embarrassing defeats a president ever suffered before the highest court of the land. So I leave you with this thought. We're going to defend this vote, the vote by which Joe Biden has been elected to the presidency, and this attempt, as has been shown throughout all of their efforts around the country on their part, to defeat uh, the voters' intent, to undermine the democracy, is absolutely certain to fail.